Okay. Hi, I'm Susan. This Cousineau. meeting is being recorded. God, thank you. Hi, I'm Susan Cousineau, and this is the office hour for Oregon State University PDC Pro Fall 2022. This is call number seven, and the next lesson due is assignment seven on February 13th. Hi, Elena. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yay, I'm glad you guys could still come. <laughs> How's everything uh, going with your... Uh, it's all right. It, it, it was it was such a weird morning because like part I, I was actually considering canceling at like 730. So I was like, this is not going to go well because she fell Sunday night. Mm. And we worked her, and then she got home from the hospital late. Uh, it was about midnight. And then I didn't know how the morning was going to go. And then things were just like piling up. I'm like, this is going to be chaotic. And I get on the office. I'm just like, I'm not going to be present at all. So and we just we had like a you know appointments booked and things coming and everything, and then it turned out about nine fifty five. I was like, it would be fine. <laughs> but send another email and you know mm -hmm. go back. So I'm I'm really appreciative that people being flexible. Yeah, of course. Ah, oh, okay. I'm just setting up Notion here. This is lesson seven. Do, do, do. Okay. Um. I don't see any new questions. Oh no, we're in call number eight now. Yeah, I don't see new, any new questions here. Did you guys have specific questions or are you just showing up to see what what's around? Yeah, I was just showing up to see okay. what other people are doing. Okay. Elena, what about you? Uh, I actually have a few questions. Um... Um, so my first question, I, I was going through, uh, plants and database and, uh, trying to find out like our local, um, basically local plant survey, go, going through local, uh, plant survey. And, uh, uh, I got a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of information, uh, mm. that, uh, you have to, I don't know, to collect and to remember. And uh, I'm just like curious if you, uh, from your experience, have a, like a system, or, like how do you systemize uh, uh, like all this information about plants? <laughs> because I kind of want to have this uh, understanding what what we have here in um, Northern California. But so far, I just like I have million tabs open about different yeah. plants, <laughs> and I just like, oh my god, what to do with this? All this information, and and understand like our our slides, they have this like things that we need to specifically um, uh, understand about like uh, sound exposure and all this thing, like med 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 medicine or medical. Uh, um, um, purpose or whatever uh but um yeah just like for your experience what what do, how do you do how do you approach um, sure. um plant plants yeah <laughs> plant plant surveys mm -hmm. yeah um, well what i usually start with and it, it I, actually I, it doesn't even really do, what i usually start with is the like what's the biome or what's like what's mm -hmm. the definition of that you know, usually you're in like an oak pine woodland or mm -hmm. You know, there's usually some some like definition of the area that you're in that is defined mm -hmm. by the plants that you're um, that are most common there that are most like you know the types of that. So start with those. So if you know if you've got an oak pine woodland, like what species of pine and what species of oak do you have there? Mm -hmm. And then if you look out on your you know whatever on your landscape and that in a if it's really, if there's some like really diff big differences, like if there's a really clear grassland area that's very distinct from like say a pine forest, uh, because there's also like, you know, savanna, which is, you know, 50 to 70% trees generally, um, then there's a little bit of mixture there. But if you look out, I'm just gonna let this next person in. Tyler, good to see you. Um, you're going to see like a dominant plant so that it might be dominated right now by like say like some um, annual grasses or like some invasive you know like an invasive 
Um, mm -hmm. So you can pick that. I mean, that's you know that's part of the what the current ecosystem is. But really pick like the major players. So start at like what's closest to 100 percent. You know, what's like 70 to 80, you know, 70 to 90. And then just like kind of keep going down. And then if that's getting, you know, if that's getting overwhelming, then just like pick one from each category, you know, because, you know, one is always going to be, is always going to be better than having nothing. Right. So just start building it up slowly in layers. And I, I've talked to herbalists that use this approach, like rather than trying to learn 10 or 20, you're like getting overwhelmed by all the plants that you have to understand, get to know one plant really well. Mm -hmm. So start start with your tree species, or um, if it's really mixed, you could do one tree, one shrub, one understory plant, like a grass or like a ground cover or something, mm -hmm. and then just kind of keep going through. Um, I'm just navigating to that in the uh, uh, da, 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 in the template. Um, so what the plants are. Right. I also found uh, multiple apps. There's an app called Picture This where I can just take mm -hmm. a photo of it and then I can yeah. compare it to other images to see if it's correct. And I can look that up and see if it's medicinal. And it shows me where it's at on the map if it's native or exotic or invasive. So that's useful right. too. Okay. And what is that app called? It's called Picture okay. This. Picture. Oh, yeah, picture. I, I also use this app. It's really, really cool app. Okay. Um, No, does that answer your question? Like, was that the kind of the um, important? Like, I get, yeah, yeah, I think, okay. yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's, it ha helps uh, to, as you said, like to focus on uh, one <laughs> one spe uh, species at a time. Like I, we, we have like, for example, oaks on our property. So I guess I need to learn more about oaks. And I think it's, it's also goes to my second question and, um, uh, it's about uh, guilds and uh, polycultures, and mm -hmm. I think that I'm uh, I don't I don't understand like I, I understand the difference between guild and polyculture, but sometimes they uh, they use together like polyculture uh, guild and tree a cherry guild, and I'm just a little bit con uh, con confused when you have to use uh, guild or polyculture. And uh, going to my first question is like right now I'm kind of so focused on creating all these guilds and trying to find all these perfect uh, plants for all these guilds. And I think that it's my 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 mistake. I need to focus on what already I have on my, my side and what I can add <laughs> to this, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because I, I don't know. I'm just uh, I think I'm all over the place and. Uh, uh, trying to understand the plants and uh, um, guilds and probably like w what plants to use on my on my uh, side, but uh, I guess like I'm asking for just some kind of structure. And uh, you give you saying that to focus on the already existing plants definitely helps. <laughs> but yeah, if you can talk about more about guild and uh, polyculture from again from your experience, sure. So. They're really, they're not quite synonymous. Like I don't, I, there's, mm -hmm. not, there's not really any real true synonyms, right? There's a, there's a difference. But um, the way that I typically see guilds used is like, it's like one plant for this, for this function, one plant, you know, one kind of one plant for each function. Polycultures mm -hmm. tend to be very much like guilds, but just in my experience, they tend to get a bit messier or there's like, say maybe there's like two or three support plans in a certain role so then that's where you start building in redundancy but really i mean functionally there's not a huge amount of difference the idea is that by having different plants performing these different functions you're both increasing biodiversity just by having more plant you've got more diversity mm -hmm. of there. you're also supporting a greater diversity so Really, the way I typically see it used is that a guild is like that kind of one to one and a polyculture is really more like sometimes it's a one function, you know, there's two or three or four plants serving that, you know, and then another function, two or three plants serving that. So it might be, um, you could look at it kind of like in a, in a broader force of food forest sense of like a guild is a single apple with say strawberries underneath as a ground cover, mm -hmm. some like 
allium, onion, and garlic or something for rodent control, um, maybe like a calm free for biomass building. So there's a kind of a one to, one to one relationship there. And then your polyculture is the whole food forest where you've got an apple tree guild, you've got a, um, a nut tree guild, a stone fruit guild, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then it's kind of the bigger picture. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, and um, I have two more questions, but um, should, should I go or, or ask, uh, let others <laughs> to, to ask any questions that they have? Others, does that bring up any other, que any other questions or should Elena keep going? So I, think um, I did have a question about um, for the local plant survey, you know, it says to put them in like the different seasons. And for, I mean, all the ones I've been finding, like, it's not necessarily like a season, like, it's just kind of all year round. So I don't know, mm -hmm. like, do I still have to stick to that seasonal uh, layout? Or is it okay if I just list the same amount of plants? But well, what the, the main, I, the, a good understanding there of like, what are some like, what are some of the dominant plants that people relied on like in a seasonal sense so for instance like oaks are you know they're present year round but they're really dropping acorns in like late summer fall right so then that's where they were historically significant because a lot of like the time and energy would go into harvesting acorns um some of the tubers are harvested more i believe like spring or spring and early summer so then you're kind of just like picking an example, but it, I think it, it is important to like maintain that, that structure and like understanding like, okay, what is one, like what is one plant? That, yes, it may, it may be present year round, but there was a real seasonality to like, to how it was managed or how it was important. Okay. And um, do you have any, can you do any examples come to mind from what you've got? Well, um, I can bring like I have a bay tree for one of mine. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know if that really had any seasonal. Yeah, I wouldn't back to um, that or not that I'm aware of because the bay. I mean, I don't know if there's any use of like sap or. I don't believe there's any even really like particular flowering in it. I mean, I I just pick bay leaves like all year round. So that would be more of like a year round example, whereas something like a lemonade berry definitely has a fruiting season. Um, yeah. And like for the ones like that, I didn't know, like, should I just put it anywhere? But I don't want people like looking at this to think that it was only during that season that it was mostly used, you know what I mean? Like. I don't know. I just. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I understand that. Well, like you. So, like you for putting that in the this chart, like I didn't know where to put it, other than, like, just pick a random spot to. Well, that yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is if there's something that's not really doesn't really have a seasonality to it, then it's probably not a good example for that particular exercise. If you wanted to, you could add, oh, so yeah, so there's two, two space there. You could add like a sidebar, even another slide for like, you know, plants that are used year round because there certainly are plenty of those, you know, probably more examples of those than those that have a real seasonal pattern to them. But the, but understanding the ones that do have a seasonal kind of a calendar um it is like is the point kind of the point of that exercise of like okay what you know what's what's really you know what was a lot of energy or thought put into managing during the spring or you know during the summer it could also i mean it could be the same plant across but you but you know they were doing something different with it so say they're like you know cutting and replanting tubers in the spring in order to be able to harvest them in, in autumn Okay, and, and then it could occur. And I didn't yeah. know like how like traditional you wanted it because like you know there's like the native people and then the like Spaniards that came th and started doing more farming stuff because like from what I've read and stuff um, 
like the Chumash, which is from where I'm at, mm -hmm. just mostly, uh, you know, use, did a lot of fishing and getting, uh, you know, like animals from the ocean as their main, and then, and then acorns being like another main staple, but I'm sure they also had like some other like plants they just harvested like as they went but um most of what I read is just mainly like that and I guess I would probably just have to do more like guessing at what kind of plants they would be harvesting um, as I they went but I don't know yeah, but, well I wouldn't I wouldn't go down the guessing route but you could d definitely dig deeper into um like and MCAT Anderson's work tending the wild She's got a very detailed history on um, indigenous plant uses and plant tending. I mean, that's the point of the book is attending the wild. So managing, so I'm not, you know, you wouldn't necessarily have to go ahead and read the whole book. Um, but, you know, if you can pick that up from the library and you can, I'm, you'll find information about what each, you know, what plants were, were common in each season. Um, I'm sure there's some of that online because she's got a lot of um, research papers as well. Um, Can there be uh, plants like it says traditional seasonal food? Can that include like non like medicinal or using for crafting homes and stuff as well, or does it have to be food? Well, I mean, I prefer, yeah, I prefer to see an edible, uh, uh, an edible or medicinal use. I mean, that is the point of that exercise that it's traditional seasonal food. Um, I'm just trying to find. California's cornucopia. Um, I'm just going to drop a few links in the um, in the chat because there's. Are you familiar with using like Google Scholar? Um, I think I've heard of it, but I I'm not really familiar oh. with it. Okay, well I'll show you what I searched. And being in a Chumash area, I should I sh should personally have a lot of this a lot more. So this is what I searched just in in, um, in my browser. So I you know I'm already getting a few plants that come up. So I'll drop a few links in here. I'll put these into the questions too. Um, some of these are going to be oh, so far everything seems accessible. Um, so here's one from tillage to table, the indigenous cultivation of geophytes for food in California. Um, my husband and I actually went to a talk at uh, Cal Poly a couple of years ago about, and this is, this is her major work about, um, so geophytes are like tumors, so they're or tu tumors, tubers. So ground, you know, ground growing plants. Um, yeah, and she's got a lot of information in there. Uh, no, I don't want to, you might have to make yourself a research gate account to get some of the, to get the last one, but I think you'll be okay. Um, but there's a few links. Um, and if you start going into these, like, and really just one or two plants for each season would, would get you there. Um, okay. Yeah. And there's also, there's a, whole, there's a lot of different Chumash like subgroups, right? So not all of them were coastal, a lot were inland primarily, you know, and they might come out to the coast for, for certain harvest seasons, but the majority of their time has been inland, majority or all of their time has been inland. So, but you are, where are you again? Where am I? Yeah, where are you in the world? Oh, um, in Santa Maria, so like you're the Santa Barbara. Barbara area. Yeah, okay, so you're quite close to the coast already. Yeah. 
Okay. Does that help a little bit? I mean, if you scan through those, you'll, you should be able to find at least a few examples to get started. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I'll for sure take a look at these and, um, yeah. Thank you for sending those. No worries. If you, yeah, if you lose track of them, they're in the um, Q&A document. Okay. So Okay. Um, Elena, you had another question. Do you want to go? Or Tyler? Anybody else? Um, yeah. Um, I just want to make sure that I got uh, uh, correct that um, plant uh, system design. Uh, we have to choose uh, one area right of our on our on our site mm -hmm. and we have to concentrate on this area to come up with goals and uh, to come up with a proposed plan just with uh, that area right yes yeah okay okay um and for example if i want to uh, concentrate on uh, an area that is full sun um and it's kind of a slope that's just a level and mm -hmm. there is nothing there right now there is just like some uh, milkweed and uh, um you just and there is a slide uh, what's the, uh, right now there yeah. uh, i don't remember existing and yeah. uh, i just like to, do i need to just put an image <laughs> of existing um, um the slope without anything or I should do something like visually create a, uh, a scheme or like a, I don't know, something, <laughs> or an image is, is gonna be enough. Which, which slide are you on, sorry? Uh, I'm, um, I'm not, uh, just a second. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna bring up your, uh, this discussion here. Um, I'm working on a different computer, so it's taking me a minute to find. Uh, I didn't do anything yet. yet. I'm just, uh, if you were going to open my uh, my slides, there there is nothing there. Um, but I'm just uh, trying to understand uh, what I should um, put. Because like in, in the examples, uh, there are this uh, kind of, it's not sketches, but like, cool looking um, uh, um, okay oh just a second uh, right here okay like, yeah, basically plans um, and I, I don't know what to put on this plan if there is just just open space and soil <laughs> there. So you mean in like saying this first slide? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 If, you're, yeah if, if people are watching this later. And, this yeah, and like if you go, uh, if it's a, you're on, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So there's, um, so it's basically just like flat grass, flat bare ground. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's or should what, I should what should I choose uh, another area? It's like uh, even uh, uh, like even more slope, and there are some oak trees there. Uh, but I want to concentrate on this specific area because it's open sun, full year all around, and I kind of try to understand what I can do on this in this area. So that's why I kind of I want to choose. Uh, okay. uh, but if you recommend, go yeah, all around. Yeah. If you, it, I guess it depends what you end up wanting to do. But if you go, mm -hmm. if you go with the flat bare ground, that's what you've got. You've got flat mm -hmm. bare ground. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. if you, if the resolution that you've got contours for actually shows one or two contour lines, that might mm -hmm. be helpful. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But otherwise, just show, just show the the plan, whatever the plan as in, exactly as it is with the scale bar and you know just all that and you're yeah. gonna have a really easy go with that slide um personally i like designing out from edges 
So I would personally mm -hmm. choose the place with the oak trees, partly because they're already providing a little bit of shade. And so mm -hmm. kind of working out from there, but then you've also, that's the part that's, it's kind of like on a hill, right? Like you've got oaks yeah. up on the hill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's a little more challenging in different ways. So I think it's totally up to you. Um, Certainly, it would be more interesting visually to see, you know, the oak trees and the, like the contours and stuff to show, you know, to go through the design exercise. Um, but it really is up to you. If you want to start with like the plain flat spot, that's that's your call too, because it's going to have other mm -hmm. challenges dealing like with the full sun. So mm -hmm. your design will be quite different. Of like, you might have to instill some artificial shade at first. Um, yeah, you're going to have like different water management because of not you know because of not having the slope it'll be a lot that'll be a lot simpler but yeah you'll just have different patterns emerging as you design but it's really up to you what you want to do for that area should i try uh, to combine these two areas or it's too much um, um i think i would not go that route because they're very they have very different um mm -hmm. kind of very different ecologies to them yeah. And for just, you know, for the for this first exercise, that's really, I think it's a lot better to just go uh, and um, one. Okay, I'm trying to bring yours up, but it's not coming up. Yeah, yet. actually, I was going to share my 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 screen with uh, some uh, images, so that you will see. Oh, okay. See. Well, let's, I'll stop sharing, and I think, uh, let me see. Share screen. I believe I've got it set to all. Oh, you should be able to. Can you share? Do you see an option there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, let me know when you see my screen. Not, not yet. I'm also not getting any kind of a dialogue that's asking. Yeah, it's um, host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, Disab you disabled. Oh, you have to go into advance. Um, there we go. Now, now you should be able to. I wonder if I can ask you. Oh. Is it coming up as an option now? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I it takes so long. <laughs> No, you can, you should. Oh, here we go. Okay. okay. Um, so, um, I'm talking uh, about this area. Um, um, so, I guess uh, it's easier. So, this is like a 70% slope. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we are planning different uh, fruit tree guilds right now here. Um, but also we have um, um, this area with uh, several oak trees and 60% uh, slope. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. shades and I kind of want to uh, interested in this because um, try to uh, design some boomerang swales or other types of swales here. So it's, um, but it's also challenging, <laughs> I guess, uh, from this perspective. So, but here, as you can see, it's just, uh, it's just slope and uh, open, open space that we okay. want to, to use. Yeah, mm -hmm. so in this case, because the one is directly above the other, Yes, yes. Right. Okay. I had it in mind that you're that the slope you were speaking of was in the back of the property and the bare soil mm -hmm. part was in the front. In this case, 
I would actually say go ahead and design them together because mm -hmm. you may be able to capture some of that water at the top of the property mm -hmm. and channel it in, you know, or manage it down below. Yeah. Like you want to be making sure that you're managing any overland flow from above. So in that case, because like they're they're what we call hydrologically connect connected, right? So if you mm -hmm. do nothing yeah. at the top of the slope and you only design the bottom, you could wind up with like a bit, you know, if you got if we got another big rainfall event, you could wind up washing out, you know, what you're doing down below because you didn't design up top. Yeah. And if you design up top first and don't do anything down below, you could mm -hmm. you could wind up losing a lot of potential. So I would definitely design those together. Yeah. Okay. Now that I see. Okay. That, too connected like that. I, I had a different mm -hmm. picture in mind, but they were quite separate. So okay. Yeah. Uh good. Um perfect. Yeah, I will try. It feels like still it's too 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 much. <laughs> but I will try. I will try try my best um uh, speaking about swales um in one uh, to in in, uh, in some of the tutorials uh, Javan talks about um swale trails and um, maybe I missed it in our previous uh, in, uh, in videos, but I've never met this term, uh, swell trails. When you put swell, uh, dig swell, then you use compost and it also serves as a path. And uh, I tried to find information about uh, creating or more information about this, but I, I didn't, I, I couldn't file. It's just like yeah, about I'm not... swell, creating swell. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say I'm not surprised. Um, there's a lot mm -hmm. of innovation that goes on, especially with swales, because a lot of times they, I mean, it just, it, there's a lot of context in which they don't really work. And so it can take some like jigging to mm. kind of blend. And that's, that's one way that people have made them work. And the, um, I'm not entirely, I, um, I don't know if that's something that Javin innovated or he picked it up from someone else. Um. But I'm not surprised that you wouldn't find additional information on there, but it, it, it does work. It's, a, it's actually a very good idea. It's kind of, it's not really what we do because we, we've just got a, a flatter site, but I have seen it done. Um, and yeah, it works really well, because especially if you've got a very seasonal rain, because mm -hmm. most of the year you're using that as a pathway. And then just for like a couple of weeks, it's like, oh, it's too muddy to be a pathway, but it, you know, then it's collecting water. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, for the right sites, it actually works really well. So, and it- And for, for, for the right side, what, what do you mean? Like, is it like more for like a slope with a slope or not a flat uh, better? Yeah, it, wor it works well on like a, on a re you know, on a reasonable slope. You wouldn't want to put it on, on anything that's really steep, mm -hmm. right? When you're collecting water and it, you know, if it's not, mm -hmm. if it's not really planted in, which a swale needs to be. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd want you just want to be careful about that. But yeah, for like a nice for a decent slope, um, it's a really nice so, and, and decent slope and a seasonal rainfall. It's a really mm -hmm. good way to manage water. Um, you know, when it's okay to be off, you know, off of it while it's really rainy, and then using it the rest of the year. So, mm -hmm. so for example, from the photos I show, like it's uh, good to uh maybe use on the slope on the higher slope uh boomerang uh, uh swells yeah. and on this th on that um uh lower level maybe think about this uh swell uh, trails yeah. right? that's mm -hmm. that's where i would go the nice thing about the little boomerang or like fish scale swales mm -hmm. um is that they only capture a small amount of water and if it fills up and spills over, it just spills over into the next one below it. Yeah. And so you don't get that risk of like a really big, of a big blowout from collecting a lot of water. Um, mm -hmm. so especially when you're just starting out and playing with it and understanding like how your soils behave, you know, under that kind of stress of like a water yeah. logging. Because um, I just started learning about dispersive clays like a few years ago um, when I did my agrarians training. Um, but there's a real balance between like calcium and magnesium. And when you, I can never remember which one, but when you get, basically when those are two are out of balance, if those clays get a lot of water into them, instead of sticking, mm -hmm. sticking together and become glue, it base it just, it becomes dispersive. It just basically explodes. And that's why we see some of these big erosion problems and big blowouts here along the coastline is because when those clays get waterlogged, they basically just, they lose all of their structure. 
Um, so that's those little boomerang swales are a really good safe way on a on a steep slope to manage mm -hmm. water, especially when you're going to be getting it in large amounts in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. perfect. Thank you. Cool. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Nicholas, how are things going with you? I know you didn't have any specific questions. Uh, well, speaking of swales, uh, I just had a lot of rain yesterday, and those things collect a lot of water. They do. <laughs> oh, cool. And, uh, yeah. Luckily, I designed the, the boomerang ones kind of like that. They're not too steep, but I just basically saw where my soil runoff was coming during the heavy rains. And then I dug okay. tiny little swales where the soil runoff was, and then it became a silt trap almost. And I feel yeah. like it holds it, it holds it better when there's a lot of silt on it. Mm -hmm. And I can even see some areas where I had to cut roots because there's a lot of roots. The roots okay. from the oak trees are uh, dripping water into the swales too. So it's kind of cool to see that. Oh, that's interesting. Huh, okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's amazing how much water you can collect in them. And if you underestimate that, um, that, I mean, that's when you see people getting big blowouts because, you know, you think it's just going to kind of like fill up and gently, you know, kind of like move water around. But yeah, especially when we're getting more of these like atmospheric river events, um, it's pretty important to, to really think about that. Cool. Well, congratulations on the rain. Yeah. The tree frogs are happy too. Oh, yeah. And you're... I'm Santa in, Cruz, yeah. yeah, Santa Cruz. I'm near yeah. Nassim. Mm -hmm. Everything. Okay. Everybody was happy. <laughs> mm. Except there was a lot of landslides, like you said. Uh, it did look like that because there's this one area I saw where it was it had a meadow behind it. It had a lot of trees and stuff. You wouldn't expect it to landslide, but the meadow mm -hmm. kind of created a pool. And uh, what was happening? It looked like uh, springs were shooting up and like push pulling the the ground with it. Because I noticed in some areas. Um, the water was coming out clear with no soil runoff. It was coming out of holes. And I was thinking maybe it was hitting like impermeable surfaces and coming out as springs and then just pushing yeah. the soil off. Yeah. So. Yeah. Bedrock, like a bedrock or shale. Shell for sure. Cool. What else? Uh, I, I see. need to I get more nitrogen to, to compost. That's what else. I, I oh, have, yeah. I'm, tr I'm trying to build a hill um, above my s slope below one of uh, it hits a swale. It's not a real hill because it's not fully in or hugo culture is that what's called. Mm -hmm. It's not fully in the ground, but I have a uh, post made out of hardwood that so it's mm -hmm. like terraced, and then I crushed okay. a whole bunch of. Uh, basically mulching and crushing a whole bunch of uh, oak trees that I cut down previous years for sun. Mm -hmm. And I put, I composted my Christmas trees and I just have to put a lot of uh, soil on it. So I'm having a rough time getting enough nitrogen and also a uh, leaf litter. I need to start using cardboard or something. Shaded. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we use ducks for that. <laughs> We put ducks on our compost. We've got a compost pit and they drop a lot of nitrogen. Um, horse manure. Do you have a composting toilet, like a bucket system? No, I have. Um, I, don't know, I used to have a dog and I was using Bokashi to mm. compost his, mm -hmm. but I don't anymore. I've been using leaf mold and then the wood rats have been a serious problem. They ate yeah. into my uh, Bokashi bin, they oh. ate into all of my FPJs, and they turn them rotten, and I'll get maggots, and then I have to clean them with dirt. And they even, my mom had a Hyundai Ionic, which has soy based parts, and they ate her engine twice. So oh, she had it. No. So we, we recently got a new car because a soy based, yeah, because well, they're trying to be uh, green energy stuff, and oh. Honda's full of it too. and so now we have a Jeep Cherokee. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. I, I have a friend that whose rats who who had rats that ate their Prius. 
like, but it was the electrical, it wasn't actually into the engine. That's crazy. Wow. Um, They're protected too, so I can't, I can't do anything about it. I'm just hopefully going to install a, a owl box or, mm -hmm. and, uh, and make some more stuff for foxes and predators to come by. Yeah. Just use them as a pesticide. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, horse, goat, rabbit manure, if you can get a hold of it in that area, I think there'd be. Um, I can get a lot of uh, kelp that washes up on shore. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, so I was thinking that's that'd be good. I could just throw a whole bunch on it and then have a giant compost on top of it. Mm -hmm. And pee on it all the time. Everybody yeah. that comes over has to go pee on it. <laughs> It's pretty, I, I it's pretty it's, high up there and there's swales. Yeah. So you, you have to be careful yeah, walking up there. Fine. Yeah. Um, and get fish. Yeah. Fish meal. I guess. Yeah. That's kind of a, a rat attracted to, I don't know about yeah. wood rats, but I know like our, you know, we've got the regular, like the black rats in the region. I was also thinking of growing pumpkins because pumpkins and, and melons, just stuff that, that has a lot of, biomass yeah because hmm. pumpkins compost really well and they grow really well over here that's true yeah and then you halloween know. you get a bit you can get a big influx yeah <laughs> and also the deer uh, the deer like to eat the seeds for mm -hmm. uh worms yeah and then i also heard about daikon radishes as uh cover crops because they're yeah. tube they're tubular and they, they can yeah. aerate the soil and bio drilling yeah yeah but I always and forget it, the season to plant them. I, I should have got them earlier. I don't fall. know. We've had, we've had pretty good success planting them, I think, into like March. Oh. And we're further south, so. All righty then. Yeah. Yeah, they do a great job. And they, I mean, we, we did, used to do a lot of ferments with them. Um, like just, you know, daikon pickles. So they're really nice crop, even, you know, whether you leave them in the ground to to break down or you pull them up and eat them. They're, you know, they're a great crop to have in place for sure. Cool. I uh, just started a, a worm compost bin this week. So oh, good for you. I'm excited about that and uh, it's going okay. I ordered some worms online and most of them were dead when they had arrival, but yeah, you know, the ones that are there seem to be all doing all right. But I'm like always so worried, worried about like, is it too wet or too dry? Because I know like it needs to be moist, but I don't want to drown them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the two things that I found worms really suffer from is too, like too much nitrogen and too much moisture. Like if it gets a little bit dry, they'll just find a, a wet spot in it. But the moisture would be kind of really, if it gets really wet, they, yeah, because things start to get anaerobic. And and I, I think too, I was like, I might have overfed them at first, but I saw like, okay, the food's still there. Like, I, I know like, um, I don't want to give them too much, so I took some out and just put in my regular compost bin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there might be a lag too of like when they're they're just starting that you know so they're laying a lot of eggs and then so suddenly you'll get like a big explosion of like all these little tiny worms when those eggs start hatching so mm -hmm. it might just be a bit of a dip. Cool, I love I love worms. <laughs> yeah, we've got a couple of big worm compost bins and they're big parts of the system. Okay. Last year I had a in ground, like an in ground worm bin that I made. Oh yeah. And uh, but the animals got to it, so I had to scrap that idea. So I was thinking of because it's a lot of maintenance, and I don't have room. And I don't. I don't want to keep it inside. I was thinking if I could mm -hmm. use maybe uh, isopods for the humic acid, or like try to make a weird. Because I know some people use isopods and a black soldier fly larvae to compost with too. For humic I've never acid. Heard about isopods. That's interesting. It's a new thing. There's a guy on Instagram called Rubber Ducky Isopods where he goes to reptile exhibits and sells them. 
but uh, he composts with them. He's a natural farmer, I think. And uh, oh, interesting! The rubber ducky. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, they, they're cute. <laughs> yeah, cause I see them all the time here. I had a a mat that I used to carry bones, and I, uh -huh. I left it out there, and there were so many under thousands of them because it it kept warm. Yeah. And I just know that they can break down wood faster too. So I was thinking I could like yeah. make a weird fungal wood compost with them. Huh. Interesting. Okay. But I'm pretty sure black uh, black soldier flies are stinky, so I don't think I'm gonna do those. Yeah, we've. You know, I love the idea, but I have not. We've not had good luck with them, and they we, it, they've gotten into our worm bins and basically decimated everything. And um, yeah, I I don't know. I I know people that that do it successfully and love them but um yeah interesting uh i also want to keep it, everything native so if it's uh, worms and stuff i don't want to bring anything that can mess up anything mm -hmm. well the worms aren't native <laughs> <laughs> yeah but they're already everywhere yeah but they are already everywhere yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, if you keep things in a closed system, but it's still nice to have things that. Because I know, I know people who use a lot of ch uh, Chinese prey mantises. I'm like, why? Why are oh, you doing yeah. this? So many <laughs> natives. Yeah, that's right. Huh. Oh, I'm gonna have to dig into that the uh, rubber ducky thing later. They've got a really neat little. Uh, can you can you send a link or because yeah, I yeah I, 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 I put it to the Google Doc and uh, um, okay. Here. It's really cute. They've got these like pink dragon millipedes, and that's neat. Yeah, and, and you can have it on like inside on your desk too if it's good. So just a little bit fun. Yeah, cool fun things. Those would be good for classrooms. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay, what else? What else can you throw at me, guys? Now everybody's digging into isopod. <laughs> okay, well, if that's all of the questions, um, seems like you guys are all on the right track. Um, yeah. Close enough. I still need to finish some of my cross section, but I've been working on it. So. Okay. Yeah, same here. Ah, <laughs> uh, the cross section from last assignment. Yeah, I just I just uh, chose one because I was going to do a different area, but I chose oh, okay. this one because it, it has a lot more uh, mature of a forest. With older uh, coastal live oaks and older oh, yeah. older stuff. Okay. It's already canopied. Well, all right. Well, let me know if you've got, I mean, just email me if you've got any questions on that. That's fine. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Don't forget the isopods, everybody. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, thanks for showing up. Thanks for flipping days for with me. Um, next week we'll be back to Monday. Cool. Thank you so much for all your um, good replies and information <laughs> that You're you welcome. shared with us. Yeah, it was really so helpful with all these links because uh, I. I had the same question as Tyler had uh, about uh, the seasonal food and it was like hard to find this so it was super super uh, helpful thanks good okay so my favorite parts of the week so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. cool bye, bye all right well have a good one and we'll see you see you all in two weeks you're almost there you're less than eight yeah two more, yeah. <laughs> two, two more. yeah good work 
All right. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. See ya.